Do you find it challenging to organize and structure your Flutter applications? If so, you are not alone. In this video, I will give you the information you need to make better decisions when structuring and organizing your Flutter application. If you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button and grow your development skills with modern software methodologies like those shown in this video. Let's begin. Flutter is an awesome framework, but it can be challenging for beginners when it comes to structuring and organizing their apps. Flutter is a UI framework and therefore it does not focus on architecture like say many other frameworks, for example, .NET MVC, which would scaffold an MVC application and give the developer some semblance of a structure to follow. Let us then look at how to modularize our Flutter applications using horizontal and vertical slicing. Why modularization? Well, there are certain benefits that your application being modular will bring as a developer. For one, reusability, where the components are so separated that it can be easily used in another application. There is maintainability. Again, because the components are isolated, therefore, it is easier to maintain in small, isolated sections. There's also testability, where it is easier to test your application or to test each module apart from the other modules. And your application is also extendable where it is easy or easier to add new features without affecting the other features in any way that, we, that is very costly to the development cycle. So let us look at a typical Flutter project structure. So this is how a typical project structure looks like. And it is okay for somebody that is starting out, it is better than not having a structure at all. But this structure only works for small applications and is oftentimes maintained by a single developer. And in such a structure, there is no physical separation and you can see that virtual folders are used to separate the different layers within the, the project. Now, another thing also is that looking at this project structure, it is hard to determine what kind of application this is. So, according to Bob C. Martin, the writer of Clean Architecture, he said that whenever you look at your project structure, it should give the intent of the application. So the framework should not be the thing that is first recognized, but rather the intent of the application, the blueprint of the application so that as you look at this project structure, you have an idea as to whether this application is a social networking application, whether it is a accounting application, but somebody just looking at the application based on the structure, based on the organization, should be able to have an idea, even a simplistic view upfront of what sort of application this is without going down into the different folders or into the structure of the application. So whilst 
this structure is good and it's better than no structure, it can be improved as we'll see. So we look at horizontal slicing, what it is and how it can improve the way we structure our application. First, horizontal slicing is where the project is organized by breaking the application into horizontal layers. And those layers, the dependencies are managed by implementing or using the dependency inversion principle. So oftentimes, the application is broken down into your core domain, your application logic, and your infrastructure adapters are where your frameworks are implemented or used. Using the dependency inversion principle, it means therefore that high level module should not depend on low level details. So your core domain should be pure and everything else should depend on your core domain. So the dependency flows from the domain and flows outward in a circular sense. So in this project structure, as you see from the example there, there is an application layer, a domain layer, and an infrastructure layer and the, the layers are managed the dependencies between the different layers are managed using the dependency inversion principle but with horizontal slicing the one of the drawbacks is that the one dev team the dev team would work on all the features and so as a result of that, there's no physical separation between the features because all the different features would be in those different horizontal layers. And so you, it, it would be hard to determine uh, the different features without first going deep into the different horizontal layers. Also, there's no physical separation between the different modules. And because there's no physical separation, then it is hard to, it is easy rather for the developer to, in a sense, cause strong coupling between, for example, the domain and the infrastructure, or the domain and the application layer, or even UI-related implementation details might spill over into the domain since there is no physical separation. So if the developer is not disciplined enough, then you can have circular dependencies rather than following the dependency inversion principle. Vertical slicing is where the project is organized into features with each feature having its own set of components. As you see, vertically each component, in this case account, has account feature rather, has different components and that feature is considered to be a slice. And so the, the, the application is organized in by features and you normally have a dev team that work on a single feature or a set of features and this kind of structure organization is oftentimes used by those who practice the agile methodology where 
one team works on a feature or a set of features and they focus on rolling out different features to the customer. So rather than working horizontally, they work vertically where the developer is working on a set of components that constitute a feature and that is rolled out. But again, in this setup right here, in Visual Studio Code, there is no physical separation between the two. Horizontal slicing within a vertical slice. Now, this is the recommended way to structure your Flutter application where the application is broken down into vertical features and those features, the components within those features are organized using horizontal slicing. So as you can see from the snippet that we have an account feature and in that account feature, we have the core domain, we have the application logic, and we have also our infrastructure layer. This setup would be duplicated across all the features that would be a part of this application. As you can see, we now have physical separation because each feature is created as a Flutter library. And since it's created as a Flutter library, then we have now the power, the ability to export or to expose only those aspects of this feature that the other features would need or that our Flutter application or the UI or the widgets they would need. So this account feature, all of its internals wouldn't be exposed. We have, we have control over what is exposed. And so there is physical separation. And then within the lib folder, we have our presentation logics, which would have our Flutter widgets, our UI, our state management, that sort of thing. So you see that in our Flutter dependencies, we would include each feature as a package. And so that's how we would get access to the different aspects of each feature that is necessary for our Flutter application. With this kind of setup, all the benefits of horizontal slicing and vertical slicing, all those benefits are realized. And now the developer, we won't have to be concerned whether or not a developer might accidentally import the wrong thing and so cause uh, cyclic dependencies and that sort of thing. Also, no our application is reusable because, for example, we can now take this authentication module and we can reuse it in some other Flutter application. We can take or uh, any any of these feature or module and you reuse them this application is now extendable it is easy to add a new feature and each feature is 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 tested separate and apart from the other feature so there we have it, it is testable and it is maintainable because now we can go to each feature and maintain it in isolation without any strong dependence on the other features. So this is horizontal slicing within a vertical slice. 
and also as a bonus to keep away most of the flutter, the clutter rather, generated by flutter. For example, the iOS folders, the Android folders, and some other files like the dot packages file. You can use Visual Studio Code settings or even an extension to hide those to make the workspace cleaner. So you can get an extension that will hide those folders, the iOS folders, the Dart tool folder, that sort of thing. So you'll end up with a workspace that is cleaner, that is less cluttered. And now this helps to speed development time and helps in terms of the readability of your application. Uh, and also it helps in terms of how you go about now approaching development of your Flutter applications. So guys, if this video was useful to you, like, subscribe, and leave a comment to let me know what you guys would like to see in the next video. But thank you for watching and continue to create awesome Flutter apps. Thank you.